we're going to continue our unit on free trade and protectionism by looking at the effect of a protectionist quota on our now familiar market of apples in South Korea. We'll start with the definition of a protectionist quota, then we'll look at our graph to see what impact a quota has on the price and quantity of apples produced and consumed in South Korea, and we'll conclude by evaluating the effect of an apple quota on the different stakeholders, including domestic consumers, domestic producers, foreign producers, the Korean government, and total welfare. So just to remind you, the reason a government might want to impose protectionism is to protect domestic producers of a good from cheaper foreign competition. As you can see here in the graph, we have the apple market in South Korea at which the world price established by countries with a comparative advantage in apple production is lower than the domestic Korean price. Therefore, South Korea will import cheaper apples and consumers will enjoy a greater level of consumer surplus than they would without free trade. But what impact would a quota have on this market? We need to start with the definition of a protectionist quota. You've probably heard the term quota before. Quota relates to a physical limit on the quantity of a particular good being imported into a country. Now clearly this differs from a tariff. A tariff was a tax on imports. A quota is a physical limit on the quantity of a good that can be imported. So looking at our graph on the right here, we can see that before the imposition of any quota whatsoever, South Korea will be importing a quantity of apples of QSK to QDK, as we showed in our earlier lessons. But what happens if the Korean government establishes a physical limit on the quantity of imports allowed into the country? Let's say that the government says that imports are limited to a quantity equal to two squares on my graph here. The limit on apple imports is from QS K to Q, Q. I'll call that the quota quantity. The number of apples legally allowed to be imported into Korea has been reduced dramatically from QSK to QDK to now only QSK to QQ. What happens in the market for apples following the imposition of this quota? The first thing we'll notice is that at the original equilibrium world price of PW, the quantity demanded of apples now exceeds the quantity supplied. There's a word for this in economics, we call it a shortage. There is now a shortage of apples resulting from the number of apples allowed to be imported falling to only QSK to QQ. So now we have imports of this amount and a shortage from QQ to QDK. As you learned in microeconomics, a shortage puts upward pressure on the price of a good. And that's exactly what's going to happen in the market for apples in South Korea following the imposition of a quota. The price of PW will start to rise, but what impact does a rising apple price have on suppliers and demanders of apples in South Korea? The law of supply says that as the price of a good rises, the quantity supplied begins to rise. And sure enough, that's what we should expect to happen here. Rising apple prices are going to lead to a movement along the domestic Korean supply curve. But the way we show that is there is a new domestic Korean supply curve that begins at PW and slopes upwards, showing that as the price of Korean apples rises, the domestic quantity supplied increases. Rising prices will incentivize Korean apple farmers to plant apples and start bringing them to market. At the same time, higher apple prices causes the quantity demanded to fall. So we see a movement along our Korean demand curve. The market will achieve a new equilibrium in the long run at the intersection of SKQ, that's the Korean supply curve with the quota, and the domestic Korean demand curve of DK. And we'll end up with a new domestic quantity demanded of QD1. The shortage is eliminated. So I'll erase that. Due to the rising prices of apples in Korea, we end up with a new equilibrium price of apples in Korea. I'll call this price PQ because it's the price following the quota and a new equilibrium quantity of QD1, which actually I should change the name of that. That should be the new equilibrium. I'll call that QE1. There is no longer a shortage of apples 
because the rising price resulting from the scarcity of apples following the imposition of the quota has incentivized domestic apple growers to plant more apples. So what we end up with is essentially an outward shift in the domestic supply curve for apples in South Korea. The world supply curve is now limited to this thick blue line since there is a physical limit on the number of apples that are allowed to be imported. I'll call that SW1. So how many apples will be produced domestically now? There are now two distances along a horizontal axis which represent domestic apple production. The distance from 0 to QSK is domestic and the distance from QQ to QE1 is domestic. So total apple consumption in South Korea is from 0 to QE1 but a chunk of that is made up of imports and a chunk of that is made up of domestic output. Now this graph looks a bit more confusing than our tariff diagram did, but it's time to break it down and evaluate the effect of this quota on domestic consumers, domestic producers, and other stakeholders. Let's start with domestic consumers. This should be very easy to see. The price is higher and the quantity demanded is lower. Therefore, there is a decrease in consumer surplus due to higher price and less quantity supplied. Consumer surplus is now a smaller triangle than it would have been with free trade. We'll shade it in yellow once again. Everything below the domestic demand curve and above the new price of PQ. This represents our new area of consumer surplus following the imposition of a protectionist quota. What about domestic producers? This is a little bit more tricky to illustrate because there are now two domestic supply curves. However, one thing is clear. Domestic producer surplus will be greater because... The quantity supplied by domestic producers will be higher and the price they sell them for will be greater. So we can say there is an increase in producer surplus due to higher price and a greater domestic quantity supplied. Domestic producer surplus can now be shown as the area above the supply curve out to the quantity supplied by domestic firms of QSK and then up to the price. So this blue shape and then it resumes above the other segment of the domestic supply curve up to the new PQ and out to QE1. So there are two areas representing domestic producer surplus following the imposition of this quota because there are two ranges of domestic output along a horizontal axis. That leaves that big white rectangle in the middle of our graph. What does that represent? Let's talk about the effect on foreign producers now. Interestingly, the imposition of a quota has a less harmful effect on foreign producers than the imposition of a tariff might. The reason for this is that the price increase is actually passed on to foreign producers. In green, I'll outline the area of foreign producer revenue before the imposition of the quota. The quantity of imports before the quota times the world price of PW. However, following the imposition of the quota, the quantity of imports is severely limited, but the price rises. So let's remove that, and in purple, I'll outline the area of foreign producer revenue following the imposition of the quota. It's the quantity of imports, that's QSK to QQ, times the new higher price of PQ. So we have foreign producer revenue equal to the purple rectangle. Overall, the quota most likely reduces foreign producer revenue. However, for those apple producers which are still able to sell their apples in the Korean market, they're selling them for a higher price, which they themselves get to keep, since this is not a tax that has to be paid to the government. So looking over here, we can say that foreign producers, the quota has a mixed effect on foreign producers. Less quantity will be imported. However, foreign producers who can import, the price is higher. So there may in fact be greater profits for the apples that do come into the country. However, fewer apples will be coming into the country. What about the government? There's actually no area of government welfare on this graph because the quota, unlike a tariff, does not create any government revenue. So there's actually no impact on government welfare since there's no revenue generated by a quota. Now this could be used to evaluate the wisdom of using quotas versus tariffs if you are asked to do so on an exam. Tariffs have a similar effect on domestic producers and domestic consumers in that consumer surplus is reduced while producer surplus is increased. However, it also creates government tax revenue which could be used 
to improve infrastructure, to build schools, to provide health care, and so on. A quota, on the other hand, creates no such revenue. Therefore, it might be less desirable than a tariff if a government must use protectionism. What about the impact on total welfare? Not surprisingly, there's going to be a loss of total welfare resulting from a quota, as there is whenever government intervenes in the markets for goods that do not create negative or positive externalities. So using my thick black pen again, I will shade the area of welfare loss resulting from the imposition of the quota. Where does this triangle come from? This used to be domestic consumer surplus enjoyed by consumers who were able to buy apples at the low price of PW. However, the imposition of the quota has increased the price and reduced the quantity. It has improved the welfare of domestic producers at the cost of lost consumer surplus. So this black area represents the welfare loss resulting from the quota. You might also say that the upper part of the foreign producer revenue is a form of welfare loss as well, since this is also lost domestic consumer surplus. However, what this really is, is it's a transfer of welfare to foreign producers. So we don't necessarily call that deadweight loss because it's not the inefficiency resulting from the imposition of the quota. Rather, it just transfers welfare from domestic consumers to foreign producers who are now selling their apples at a higher price in South Korea. So the effect on total welfare is once again negative. There is a loss because the decrease in consumer surplus will exceed the increase in domestic producer surplus. Also, there is no government welfare. So now we have a full analysis and evaluation of protectionist quotas. Quotas, quotas are a physical limit on the quantity of a particular good being imported into a country. The goal is, of course, as in the case of all protectionism, to protect domestic producers of the good, increasing producer surplus and producer revenues. But this comes at the expense of domestic consumers and once again, foreign producers who would have been selling much more of the good in the country if it weren't for the quota. The big difference between the quota and the tariff, however, is that the quota actually increases the price that the foreign producers who are able to get their goods to the market are selling those goods for. So it actually transfers welfare from domestic consumers to foreign producers. Additionally, it does not create government revenue as a tariff does, so there's no additional tax revenue that can be used to provide public or merit goods to the people of the country.